Good morning, church. This is the first installment of our Black History Moment series. And for today, I will be speaking to you about John Charles Robinson. Now, this is a name you don't hear often, but his impact was felt worldwide, from America to Africa. He was considered the father of the Tuskegee Airmen. And thanks to his contributions, the aviation programs at the Tuskegee Institute were created by him. But John Charles Robinson was known as the Brown Condor, and he was born in a small town of Carabelle, Florida. Seeking greater economic opportunity, Robinson and his family moved to Gulfport, Mississippi. And it was here where he would develop an early interest in aviation after watching a barnstormer, an early version of stunt pilots, that flew in a nearby field. Robinson's family placed a great emphasis on education and allowed him to explore many of his interests, some of, which, some of which were machinery and specifically planes. And this led to him attending the Tuskegee Institute, a prestigious institution, at the age of 18. After two years, Robinson graduated and migrated north in search of greater opportunities. He ultimately settled on Chicago, Illinois, which was considered a primary center for black aviation at the time. And after landing in Chicago, Robinson quickly set his sights on Curtis Wright School of Aviation in Chicago, one of America's, not black America's, one of America's leading aeronautical schools at the time. No African Americans were allowed into the school, and so Robinson decided to take a job as a janitor. Open proximity would aid his pursuit, and ultimately, he was right. After unofficially sitting in on classes for long enough, an instructor decided to secure a place for him where Robinson ended up being the first black student at the school. Robinson, an avid learner, graduated at the top of his class in May of 1931. In Robinson's mind, aviation was the most techno technologically advanced field, and so he was a powerful advocate for black Americans in this field as a way to demonstrate how capable they were. He displayed this advocacy by recruiting and teaching the first black class, including both men and women, at Curtis Wright and he became the first black aviation instructor in the school's history. However, Robinson would soon realize that with all these black pilots he was teaching, and with a growing interest in aviation within his community, a place where black folks could train and fly would be necessary. And so, with the help of Cornelius Coffey, a mechanic and aviator, as well as many others, he built the first black-owned airport in the town of Robbins, Illinois. There were five women amongst the early students at the school, one of whom you may have heard of. Her name was Willa Bragg, and Bragg would go on to become the world's, excuse me, America's first black woman to hold a commercial pilot license. In May of 1934, Robinson flew back to Alabama, specifically the Tuskegee Institute, where he hoped to convince them to offer aviation courses. After two years, Tuskegee decided to finally offer courses. However, this came while Robinson was in Italy fighting a whole different battle. At the time, Ethiopia was the only remaining independent nation in Africa as of 1935, which led Robinson to identify closely with the plight of Ethiopians. As the Ethiopian Emperor Selassie called for Western aviation experts to aid the nation's Imperial Air Force, Robinson answered the call and volunteered for a special mission. Robinson's tenacity and his ability to lead men was on full display. And within a few months, he earned the rank of colonel and commanded the entire Imperial Ethiopian Air Force. Robinson doubled the number of airplanes available, modified some planes to drop bombs, ran recon missions, engaged in dogfights with Italian aircraft, and earned international renown as the Brown Condor of Ethiopia. Robinson was the only American volunteer to serve in Ethiopia's defense from the beginning all the way to the end. In fact, Robinson left town on one of the last trains out of Ethiopia after it was clear the Italian army was simply too much. But he remained committed to fighting fascism and served in the United States Air Force during World War II. And after World War II, Robinson returned to Ethiopia, specifically Addis Ababa the last city to fall in Ethiopia some years earlier as an aviation instructor, where he established training schools and played a key role in the establishment of East African Airlines 
Sultan Airline, Airlines, and eventually Ethiopian Airlines, which was officially established in 1945. As of 2020, Ethiopia Airlines is the largest airline in Africa and the world's fourth largest airline by the number of countries served. In all, John Charles Robinson was credited by the Tuskegee Airmen as one of the founders of their program and remained an inspiration not just for black aviation, but for black excellence. Robinson's thirst for knowledge, his leadership capabilities, and his desire to do right by his people are ultimately what made him a shining example of our black history moment. Thank you.